Holy shit. That just happened. That was incredible. See if we can get him out. Yeah, put 911 on speed dial. Definitely one of the scariest fish I've ever dealt with in my life. It took me a while, but we hooked up on a red off that bunker school. use this feature to my advantage. Oh, this camera died in the midst of fight. Pretty good fish right there. It's a nice one. And you can kind of see if you look at the the surface of the gear tooth, which is that southern side, that's the wear area. It's mainly just polished, uh, which is what you want to see. Seal the same exact way as a slammer. There's really no difference. The seals are here, perimeter body steel, seal here, seal at the main shaft, which I'll show you real quick, right down in there, which the previous generation Spinfisher 5 did not have. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all to my review of the brand spanking new Pen Spammer. Now, two quick things before we get started. This, my friends, is a video where as long as you're subscribed to both JNH Tackle's channel and mine, all you have to do is be entered for a chance to win this beautiful $450 retail that JNH is selling for $250. Daiwa Kyoga is leave a comment down below, and in seven days from the posting of this video, I will pick at random one lucky winner. This, my friends, is an amazing conventional reel. Shallow spool capacity, long jigging handle, and precise as a Rolex, and it's got a sick anodized purple finish. Beautiful reel, and I wish everybody down below the best of luck. You guys are gonna love this reel, whoever the lucky winner is, or whoever buys it for 250. And in addition to that, Going forward, this applies to both new and old subscribers. Make sure you hit the notification bell because anytime I post a video premiere, I'll select at random from the comments during the active premiere session a lucky winner who will receive a gift card to JNH Tackle of a random dollar amount. And it's with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. And this was a very interesting review. Penn sent me these reels back in July. I sent one of them to Elias. I fished the crap out of this one and put a little bit of time on this one. And I, I gotta tell you, I filmed the review already from start to finish like a week and a half ago. And I didn't like the direction I went with it because I kind of focused on stuff that I found before I sent the reel to Elias and I didn't like that kind of rabbit hole I went down. So I scrapped it. But for full transparency, that will be included in the end. It's probably about 25 minutes long if you guys wanna hang out and watch it. It's me unboxing this re uh, reel and doing a tear down and all that kind of good jazz. But for the main portion of this review, we're just going to go ahead and go over all the features, the advantages, the benefits of the spin fisher compared to its competition and how it stacks up to other reels uh, that you're likely to be looking at in the price range at above or below. Now, I like doing comparisons and I don't like playing favorites as far as just trumping up a reel. So we're going to go back and forth with both the good and bad. So I hope you enjoy this format and I hope you stick around because I'll tell you what, there's going to be a lot that we're going to cover and if you guys just want the abridged version, uh, this might be one of the best $200 or sub $200 spinning reels for the salt uh, in quite some time. Uh, I have not had really any issues that I can really chalk up to on the water failures or issues caused by fishing the reel under normal conditions. I did dunk this reel in a dunk tank test for up to three hours, and I'm chalking up the failed pinion bearing to that. And at the same time, I guess we could start off with a negative. And it's something I brought up when I did the Slammer versus Saragossa video. And that is, I don't like the way they seal the top of the pinion. I feel as though they kind of phone it in. Instead of actually putting an effective rubber seal, they use a, a hydrophobic coating similar to that of what you could buy in this Rustoleum Neverwet kit. 
And it's with that being said, uh, my sample, these are pre-show samples or pre-release samples that were probably iCast displays. Uh, my Spin Fisher long cast did not have that hydrophobic coating applied, so I went to town and started sp spraying a crap all over the place to, uh, to add that. And it took it pretty well. And I, I, I wish they went about sealing the top of the AR clutch like the Shimano Spheros. Twin Power SW, Saragossa SW, Stella SW. I think it would be more effective. And, you know, I've seen on the forums and message boards, Penn's, Penn's claim was they wanted a free spinning reel that didn't want to add any resistance at the rotor. But the Saragossa is one of the sweetest reels out there. Buttery smooth, free spinning. I, I just don't like the way they chose to seal that. And again, I've seen issues on the slammers. I had an issue with this reel where the, the pinion bearing up top uh, corroded. And I, I wish they had gone a different way. Now, moving from the bad, which isn't really all that bad because technically, as long as you're not dunking the reel, it should hold up. And I'll put a little clip where they do the IPX5 or IPX6 testing, where they literally spray a fire hose at the reel for X amount of minutes and it, it takes it. But again, it looked like it was fresh water. So if that was salt water, a week and a half later, would it have manifested into some sort of corrosion? So who knows, but that's how they test the reel. And going back to a positive, this, my friends, is one of the best line managing pen spinning reels uh, I've ever come across. The line lay is perfect. Fairly tight angles of line lay, very even, no caving in at the top of the spool. Perfect line lay. I've been fishing it this tight to the spool lip the entire time I've been fishing this reel since July, I've probably put about 35 outings and probably about 250 stripers on it. Uh, maybe three or four bluefish because the bluefish haven't really shown up that, that early yet or that much yet. And, uh, and I can't think of one bad experience I've had in terms of how this reel manages line, which is not really what I can say about the pen battle too. You can see how the line kind of caves in at the top. If you uh, search on the interwebs, you can find tons of discussions about the poor line lay on the battle too. Uh, the Spin Fisher 6 is leaps and bounds better, near perfect. And if you compare it to the Saragossa, this one has a little bit less line on it. This is Buddy Reel's line. And uh, it's as good, if not better, than the pricier Saragossa. You can see right there. Maybe a little bit more caving on the Saragos, maybe a little bit more lumpy through the midsection here, but uh, great nonetheless. So that's a major plus for the Spin Fisher. Uh, a negative that I found, not a fan of the handle. And the Pen Glash had that, that round EVA knob. I really wish they incorporated that instead of this wonky kind of handle, where in a, on a few occasions, just by randomly grabbing the handle, maybe at the wrong spot at the wrong time or the wrong spot of the rotation, it caught my knuckle between there, and I'll tell you what, it was like somebody hit with a hammer. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just a, a wimp, but man, it took me by surprise. I was like, what the hell is this? Did something bite me? <laughs> I was like, what the f*** is this? Um, so a round EVA knob and a knob that was not riveted on, so if you wanted to upgrade it easily without drilling it out, would have been a nice touch. Unfortunately, it went with a riveted on handle, and it's the same handle that you'll find on the Battle II. Uh, back to the good. I mentioned and compared it to the Saragossa. It's nearly as smooth after some minimal use. It kind of wore in a little bit and it became as smooth as pretty much any, any Shimano spinning reel. I really couldn't tell, including, you know, the Daiwa BG, which is one of the best $99 reels made in the last 20 years. Um, it's directly comparable and refinement uh, to the BG, to the Spheros, to the Saragossa. And I'll tell you what, this is my new darling. I picked it up about a week ago, put a, uh, two trips on it now. And this is the LT6000. I bought it on a whim because I had to send one of my Saltigas out for repair. I didn't want to be down a reel. And I, I never really got a good idea of what size this reel was. This is really the only 200-ish dollar reel. And this one goes for what, 250? You can get them online for like, I don't even know what the price has come down to now. I'll put links down below for all the reels. Uh, this is really the only, you know, refinement benchmark reel that really raises the bar. The, the Daiwa Ballistic LT with that giant machine aluminum main gear uh, is extraordinarily precise. So that's really the only reel at this price range uh, that the, the Spin Fisher 2 or 6 doesn't really hold a candle to. And uh, 
with that being said, let's move on to another negative. And when I say negative, it, it's not something that's make or break. Uh, and I'm gonna bring this up even though mine were kind of show samples. Uh, the line roller bearing on mine was a little raspy when I got it. And in short time, it seemed that salt water kind of did it in. Never locked up on me, never seized, but it just got really noisy. So I'm sitting there, you know, retrieving, you hear that sound. Uh, that uh, ball bearing line roller here uh, failed within short order, as did the one I sent to Elias. So it's worth pointing out uh, that even though they're sealed ball bearings, uh, they are susceptible to corrosion. On a bright side, there are Lego parts that you can buy from pretty much any authorized pen repair dealer or parts distributor. Buy them, they're cheap, buy a couple of them, pop a new one in every couple, what, six months, eight months, a year, and uh, you'll be good to go for a very long time. Uh, and in addition to that, I, I, I can't really see too much else in terms of true negatives. I did find uh, that the paint on the reel that I sent to Elias didn't really hold up all that well. And it's one of those things where mine held up beautifully. It looks like it's literally never been used. Um, his looks like it went through a uh, denim jeans uh, factory. And I'll tell you what, I honestly attribute to this. Uh, and again, I wasn't there. I think it was when he was kind of just tossing his gear in the bed of the truck and he was bailing ahead of Hurricane Florence that devastated his hometown. I mean, the eye went over his house. So he had to get out of Dodge and he was sitting in traffic and he had all his gear and he's a YouTuber, so he had to fish. So he had to bring his gear. And it just looks like rash that would occur if you had to sit on in the bed of a truck kind of deal. And I also found that the bail arm, if you see this right here, see where it goes into the line roller assembly there? Something loosened up. Nothing I can fix on hand. I opened this up trying to get it from the other side. Maybe there's something I can tighten. I didn't think so, uh, but it did become a little wobbly. And I can also say that there's a nice dent right here. And I believe there's another one over here. And again, that tells me it was just the way this reel was transported that kind of, you know, playing Matlock and doing my detective work, you know, when you look at the gray here and the gray here, that tells me it was transport wear and tear. And, and, and I can't leave this out. This gray patch here was me just hitting it with rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. And you'll see that when I add into the second, the video, the second review, where I actually show you where I wipe it off. Do not use rubbing alcohol anywhere on the plastic coated parts. It will act as a paint stripper and get right down to that bare graphite rotor. So it's with all that being said, brilliant reel, absolutely brilliant. And how does it compare to its big brother, the pen slammer? And this is why I call this the spammer. And it's not because pens can be sending you random annoying e emails like this election season. Uh, it's because that when you hit the 6,500 size and go up, you are real close to being a pen slammer with a different name. Uh, as the rotor goes from graphite to metal, instead of a machined aluminum main gear, you get a machined brass main gear. The only real difference is the drag stack on the spin fisher is top only versus the slammers, which has the top and bottom. The bail on the slammer, instead of being stainless steel on the spin fisher six is made out of titanium. And honestly, that really pretty much is about it. The ceiling, this is where it gets interesting. The reason why the Slammer has an IPX6 rating is because it's sealed the same as the Spin Fisher 6 standard version. This reel is sealed the same exact way as the Slammer. There's really no difference. The seals are here, perimeter body steel, seal here, seal at the main shaft, which I'll show you real quick, right down in there, which the previous generation Spin Fisher 5 did not have, which was one of the first things I checked when I got these reels. I'm like, did they put a seal at the main shaft? Finally, yes. And they have the same method of sealing at the top of the air clutch with the fancy spray paint. And the reason why they don't call this reel and this reel IPX6 is because there's an extra point of entry where water can get in under this anti-reverse on-off switch. And, and there are extra potential areas of water entry points here, here, and here. So instead of adding confusion and saying the live liner and the long cast are five and the standard one is six, and to kind of make people go and spend the extra couple bucks in the Slammer 3, they just put the whole series of reel one step lower. And again, IPX6, IPX5, IPX8, 9, 12, 30, 40, 
Somebody sent off fireworks? It really doesn't make a difference. The ceiling is fairly adequate. You can take some waves on the chin. It just, in my experience with both the Slammer 3 and the Spin Fisher 6, it's not going to like getting dunked unless when you get it home, you take off the rotor retaining nut, pop the rotor, and get some fresh water or maybe some grease down on the top of that air or clutch bearing and uh, do something to protect it because water is going to get past that sealed ball bearing and get into that bearing and cause the same issues that I've had, which make it raspy. And I'll go ahead and clip the mic on it. Very smooth reel. You're not gonna, you should not hear any geariness, which is something you really don't say too much about pen spinners. And if you hear that tick at the top and bottom of the oscillation cycle, I'll hold the reel perfectly upright, so it's, it's going to be the most impactful. I promise you that while you hear that slight tick, you do not feel it at all whatsoever, which I know for a fact the guys that own the Slammer 3s were pulling their hair out over. And the way my brain works... It wasn't something that you heard much about early after the Slammer 3 came out, that annoying tick sensation and feel. I feel as though that that cross wind block over the life cycle of the mold that it's cast in may have worn a bit and the tolerance kind of changed, allowing more slop to happen or occur. And that's what you feel as a thump or a tick. That's what I think happened. So if you're, if you're thinking about getting a Spin Fisher 6, Get them while they're hot because you don't know how long it's going to be. That way. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. I can't, I, I can't tell. I don't know. Uh, if you have a tick in your Slammer 3, you might want to reach out to you know, Mystic Parts and pick up a crosswind block and swap it out. Maybe it's an older generation or an earlier uh, cast, and it may be more precise, the tolerance, and you might not have that issue. And you know, just to give you an idea... We'll clip on the Ballistic LT, which I made the bold claim was the smoothest reel on the table, which I personally feel it is. Now that tick that you hear, that is a little bit of handle play going in and out meshing with the gear since there's no load being put on it the rotor and pinion kind of kind of kind of gets ahead of you of the, uh, the main gear a little bit which is very common when you play with reels on your table and when you compare these two reels this is a a half size up. It's if you go up to the 5500 spin fisher, it jumps up pretty significantly. This is almost like an in-between size. Again, 11.9 ounces fully spooled, 13.3 ounces fully spooled, and this I believe gets more or fits more line. Uh, I fit 300 yards of 30 pound braid, which is the same exact capacity as the BG 4000, and the big bad Saltiga 4000, which this comes in at almost a half a pound less. Half a pound, almost eight ounces. That's ridiculous. I've been fishing this on an 11 foot uh, tournament ballistic, two to eight ounce rated rod. Never in my entire lifetime would I ever expect to put an 11 ounce reel on a rod that's capable of leaning into four ounces. Leaning into off the ground cast. You can probably pendulum if you really wanted to an ounce and a half with it too without sawing it in half and folding it over it's a very powerful rod i was throwing four and five ounces and a bunker head with that reel on an 11 foot rod i was throwing three quarter ounce bucktails swinging them in current enjoyed every second of it i handed it to my buddy his first cast he almost fell out of his boots because he was like what the heck and he was throwing an 8,000 size sustain on a 10 foot tier alejo which was one of my former rods which is one of my favorite rods ever and it was just blowing, I mean, he was mind blown how light it was. The whole setup was 23 ounces for a rod and reel that can th can legitimately throw, not just lob. You can pick your trajectory with six ounces in a head if you really wanted to. Crazy, crazy $500 rod, but insane. I, I was blown away. And again, this isn't a dialogue review. 
<laughs> this is how I get sidetracked, guys. This, this, this is unfortunately when you have all this crap in front of you. And part of the reason why I held off on this review is because I wanted to get some time on this reel to see if it is indeed something that should be considered when you're looking at this reel. Had this reel taken dunks like a champ, like a Saragossa, like a VR install, I, I don't know if I would have brought it up. Because I had issues with that line, uh, the, the roller uh, bearing at the uh, interverse clutch, it's one of those things where the ballistic, it's got very flimsy seals on it. It's not a rugged reel. It does have mag seal. It keeps some water out of the AR clutch, which is nice. It'll The, the, the anterior reverse and pinion bearing up here uh, will survive in the ballistic longer than the BG. Um, but the handle seals that it has will, will be outlasted by the seals found in the spin fisher along with the perimeter seal. So it's kind of like if you're a little bit more careful if you get a year out of this reel you should no problems if you get two awesome worth the money worth the 250 bucks whatever it is that you can get it for because it is a game changer open beach back bay 11 <laughs> but anyway let's get back to this spin fisher <laughs> mind blown on that freaking reel uh this is the live liner uh, this is the reel I sent to Elias. Uh, this is a reel that before I sent it to Elias, I found some issues where if you turn the handle, you see how it turns smoothly? If you go like this, I just want to make sure, yeah. See how it gets tight? And I'll do this. This will make it easier. Nice, smooth, quiet. I don't know if you heard that little click. Turn your volume down. It probably took me three hours to get that odd little quirk ironed out. And it has to do with the seals and the bearing pockets that are held in place by three screw screws on both side plates. And the ultra tight tolerance between the axle of the main gear and how it traverses the ball bearings in each side plate being so grippy that I assume at the factory when they assembled it, they didn't shim it properly, and I tried playing musical shims, and I just I just couldn't get it to... I, I thought I got it. When I sent it, I thought, I was like, yes, Eureka, we got it. The shimming combination, perfect. We got the screws tightened, and the six screws that were on the side plates, I can get a full half turn on, which would press that bearing further into the pocket, further compressing the rubber seal on the side plate. And uh, I got it back, and that was one of the first things I checked. You'll see that on camera later. And I was like, Darr! <laughs> I thought I got it. But... Part of the reason why I scrapped the video that you'll see later is because if it was an issue, it wouldn't have survived. I mean, legitimately, if it was that big of a problem, which I really didn't see it as, I just wanted to know what, I just really didn't want the reel to fail as a result of that after Elias got on the water with it. And getting it back, it was like you see here. I haven't maintained this reel. It's been sitting on my bench for couple of weeks now uh, because I've been doing a million different things and again I had to reshoot this video and I, I gotta tell you I would buy this over a re-release of the original Thunnus not just because I like how smooth this reel is I really don't care too much it's a bonus when you get a smooth reel but as far as a rugged live liner bait runner style reel there's nothing else in the market that even touches this thing you know it's got the machined aluminum main gear or the brass in the larger size it's got a sealed secondary drag unit in the bottom whereas this is what you're looking at when you have the original thunnus which was up until this point the best bait runner ever made better than the, the current ci4 plus bait runner. who needs an ultra light bait runner when it's sitting in a rod hole or a sand spike or you're just kind of propping a rod butt up on your hip what, what does it matter if it's made out of carbon composite or metal 
This was a big heavy reel, had a tall long stroke spool, worm gear oscillation, a great level one, uh, live liner feature. But the other bonus of the Spin Fisher, which really, really dominates over this one, the simplicity. The simplicity of the actuation system for the drag B mode on the Thunnus is very complicated. If I were to go like this, or if I were even just to remove this screw and this and open it up and that part pulled out, it will take you a solid 20 minutes extra just to get it back in if you knew what you were doing. If you're not familiar with what you're doing, oy vey, you're just throwing this in the garbage. I can't tell you how many times when this reel was the hot ticket for the chunker and the long range caster because it had that tall spool and a warm gear oscillation. A lot of guys were using this for long distance pencil popping and bunker snagging on the beaches. Hey, I can't get my reel back together, Scooby. Can you? Can you? And I, I did because I, I understood that you know this was the reel to have, and people wanted it, so I got it back to them as, as quickly as possible. And I did that probably half a dozen times in one year alone. And then I think I, I received a couple of requests to do it, and I did two or three more. And then said, "You know what? That's it. They discontinued the reel." So, hands down, the best current bait running reel on the market. It's got to go to the Penn Spin Fisher 6. If you're looking to live line bunker pogies or what do you want to call them, if you want to you know <laughs> slide some eels and just drop them down and let them sit there. If you want to do some light trolling, if you're trolling tubes and you want to play Mr. Lever, Lever Drag with a spinning reel, set the pre-tension adjustment knob in here a little lower. This is what's cool. This is how this live liner feature works. I, I think it's genius. Whoever designed this at Penn, let me know. I'll send him a gift certificate to go buy a beer. <laughs> you loosen this up. It comes with its own little tool. Let me see if I can grab it real quick. So you loosen this up. You never want don't don't remove this if you don't have to because it's a pain to get back in, especially if the click plate comes out. You put that back on. Make sure you don't tear the seal. Hopefully with that gift certificate for the beer, he doesn't break the seal. And then you have multiple stages of drag pressure. Really cool. So you have your you have your light setting, your medium setting. It goes up to four stages. And all you have to do is preset it. If you want to go real tight, tighten that up in the bottom. Go to one, two, three, four, and boom, you're in business. It, it's not as on the fly fine tunable as the Thunnus or the the, the the original, you know, bait runner D or B. But who cares? You set it. You're, you're chunking in a river, you're chunking in current, set it up a little bit higher. You got one, two, three, four settings that will cover you in 90% of the situations. Uh, not really a, a negative, not being able to adjust it from start to finish on the fly. But at the same time, the max drag pressure on the bait runner B is a little bit higher than the Thunnus and the bait runner D. So it's, it's a convenient feature and a nice little bonus. These two spools, if, as long as the standard one and the live liner one are the same size number, 4,500 versus 4,500, 5,500, 55, 65, 65, the spools will be 100% interchangeable. Uh, for a while, I just flip flop spools and it worked great. So really, really nice. Top of the line, best in class in my opinion. Withstood the torturous rigors that Elias puts his gear through while evading a hurricane and catching Barra freaking Cuda on it and Bull Reds. So, I, yeah, I can't say enough good things about this reel. Absolutely brilliant. Fully recommend it without any regrets or any worries that you're going to have an issue. I really think as long as you get a good one out of the box and it's not a defect or a dud or a lemon, it will perform for a long time. And, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. I'm not going to go into the drag specs. All For each size reel, the amount of drag pressure they can put out is adequate. If you want, or I should say... If you need more drag, go with the slammer. It's only going to be better. It has the drag stack on the top and bottom. If you want to see what it looks like, you can see the slammer versus a Saragossa and the slammer versus a Saltus reviews that I put out. And you'll see me tear down the drag entirely. You can you know get up close and personal with the drag stacks. Uh, one of the best drags ever made in a spinning reel, rivaling that of the Saltigas. And the Stell is the only real bon bonus uh, is to the Saragossa Stella and Twin Power and that the drag on the Spin Fisher uh, uses a plastic plunger here and I only bring that up because Denny Snook 
who lives down in South Florida, he's a commercial land-based fisherman, had a Saltiga 4000, and God knows where I put my drag knob. Uh, the drag knob plunger melted, grabbed the, the top washer here, bound to the spool, and when the fish ran, tightened up and broke off, which was an issue many years ago with the original Saragossas for tuna. I think it was Captain Mike from the Renegade was the guy that was experiencing it. I remember hearing the gunshot sound like when they broke off on a cow tuna. And uh, yeah, the, the, the drag knob swelled up, bound to the spool, tightened up as the fish uh, took line. And, you know, you can only hold up to so much pressure before it goes bang on an 80-pound test. Uh, it's a loud bang. And uh, that's really the only way I can really critique the Slammer Drag in a neg negative way and the Spin Fisher Drag in a negative way. Because for all intents and purposes, a top-only drag stack, how many world records over the last 100 years have been claimed with, you know, top-only drag stacks? I'm, I'm not a top, top and bottom drag stack kind of guy. It's not something that I need, especially in the surf. It really isn't, unless you're fishing for roosters down in Mexico. You don't even need it. And, you know, great design, great reel, lots of metal, graphite in a rotor. doesn't make a lick of a difference in the size reels that a graphite rotor comes in on the spin fisher. You get the metal rotor when you hit the 6,500 size. Absolutely blown away. Probably my favorite pen spinning reel series I've ever seen. Uh, I did like the Torque 1. I was a little critical on how they changed the cup or how they came out and debuted a few things for the spool support. I didn't like how they did the seals of the body where they had the screws inside the rubber seal, which I got a kick out of when I opened up the slammer and this reel where the perimeter sealing is inward of the screw holes. So water can't get by the screw holes and get by the seal. Uh, everything they did on this reel, uh, top marks, I'm gushing over a pen reel, which <laughs> I don't think I've ever thought of in my life I'd say that about one of the reg beaters. I mean, you look at some of the reels they came out with in the past. Oh, God. I mean, I, I, I think their best reel, and I think it's, is this right here? How do I, I don't plan on having, I don't, I'm not one of those people that plan that far in advance that I was going to say one of their best reels ever was a pen affinity, which was a Ryobi. It wasn't even a pen reel. And to have pen Ryobi <laughs> sitting right in front of me within arm's reach. Who else on YouTube could say that? Honestly. Only tackle advisors. And, uh, and it even had a line on it. I fished it last year. <laughs> I don't know why I even fished it. It's a heavy one. I had a Stella. I just felt like using it. But, yeah. So, it's with all that being said, if you are in the market and you plan on... Per put it this way. If you plan on buying anything, and you if you like the work I do, I put links down below. Black Friday is coming up. Holidays are coming up. If you're doing shopping on Amazon, click those Amazon links in the description below. Before you do any shopping, I get a piece of the action. It doesn't cost you anything. All you got to do is click that link ahead of going to Amazon. It's that simple. If you are buying fishing tackle, uh, jnh.com is a spectacular shop. He's got a great inventory. He is one of the biggest caterers to the surf casters in the Northeast. He's one of the world's largest van stall dealers. Uh, he's got VRs in stock. He's got VSs in stock. He's got everything you need. He's a, he, I'm finding out through our, our business relationship that he's a cool dude. I, I, I've enjoyed dealing with him. And I, I can't often say that I've had the pleasure of working with intelligent, business-minded individuals in the tackle industry. There's a select few. I'm not saying everybody's bad. But uh, he's been a pleasure to deal with. He gets my brain. And we're working on bringing my products my silly little brain spasms that shit out ideas um, that are market changing. Uh, he likes some of those ideas. And uh, going forward, uh, Tackle Advisors is going to be either going broke or dying trying. <laughs> trying to invest in some of these ideas and bring them to light. Uh, I can't really talk too much about them because, again, uh, they are market um, changing. And again, I, I say that because I've been in every single spinning reel over the last 20 years, or at least 70% of the, the big names out there. So I, I see what they do. I see the wool that they try to pull over their consumer's eyes. And it's very interesting to see how, you know, 5, 10, 20 years later, um, how things never change. And there's only a select few that kind of do it the right way. And it's, it's really nice to see Penn uh, coming strong with this, this new Spin Fisher 6. And if you're in the market... If you're in the market for a $50 reel, $100 reel, $1,000 reel, check the links down below. Whether you buy it from J&H Tackle or any other links they put down there, 
it all supports what I'm trying to do here, which is spread real information, not bias information like tons and tons of other channels out there, uh, which, you know, I, I, I see them sign up and try to get sponsors by all these tackle companies. And it's just like, really, dude, you had a great channel. I, I get the financial aspect, but it's like, damn, bro. Anything you say now has got to go out the window because I know you're just going to be shilling for the company because you have to. You are required by the contract you sign to only use their gear and you can't say anything negative. So it's with that being said, this is the initial review I was going to put out. I hope you enjoy that. And I, I, I feel that I haven't said it enough in the last two videos. I greatly appreciate the time you guys spend here. Without you, I wouldn't exist here on this, on this platform. You know, it's November 5th right now. And I put out the announcement for the giveaway for my 21,000 subscriber giveaway. And I was at like 20,500. It's not that much further along and I'm about to break 22,000 subscribers. And I checked on Social Blade the other, uh, the other day. I now get more views in one month than the Guggen Squad channel by 50,000 views. I'm beating the Guggen Squad by 50,000 views. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I got excited over that. And I don't know if they're if the Guggen Squad channel even posts videos anymore, if they just post their normal stuff. But I just looked them up on, on Social Blade, and I was like, yeah, buddy. And, uh, yeah, and again, I've actually come around a bit. I didn't like that because as a budding YouTuber, I'm like, these guys put out garbage. You don't know what the hell they're doing. I'm 36 years old. These kids are trying to tell their kids in the, in the audience to buy all the crap they're using, and they can't even fish. And I'm thinking to myself, why hate? Look at what they did. Now... They put out some damn good content. And that was a short, short period of time. That was a year and a half, and they're putting out some amazing, amazing stuff. I was watching some of the John B. stuff when he's on the Amazon. Never mind. I'm going sidetracked, sideways. Let's go on with uh, the initial review if you guys want to hang out and watch that. And again, thank you guys. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Tight lines, and I will see you very soon. Make sure if you're subscribed, hit that notification bell. And if you're not already subscribed, Go check out some of the other stuff. You'll see I don't I, I do not do things like any other channel out there. And uh, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And let me know down below what your thought, what, what, what I can improve. You know, I'm up for criticism. Let me hear it down below. Take care, guys. Tight lines. And I really don't know what to expect once I get in the box. And without wasting any time, let's get right down to it. Hopefully I don't cut the reel. I don't know how it was packaged. We're going to go ahead and peel back and expose the goods. Now, Penn had no idea what I was going to do with these reels. They said I can do whatever I want. And uh, I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to put enough quality time on all three of the reels. I've been fishing the standard one and I've been fishing the long cast one. And I can honestly say that I have really nothing but good things to say about them which is rare when it comes to me and a pen product so i'm very curious to see how this reel held up the only thing he said that it had an issue with was some of the paint started chipping and peeling away so we're going to go ahead and find out what he means by that in a minute so let's take a look at the handle this feels a little bit tighter than it was but that's probably just because salt deposits got inside here but it still spins freely does not look like he cleaned it off at all, which is perfectly fine. You can see some of the paint on the rotor is starting to wear away. And that's that's kind of a common thing on pen reels. No offense to pen. And you have down here, standard amount of rash. Again, Elias, if you haven't seen his channel, he fishes four days a week, and he sits on a laptop editing the rest. And... Uh, he was a, a good specimen to send this reel for, uh, to, and I did ask him how it fished using the uh, live liner feature. He didn't use it all that often, uh, but he said when he did use it, uh, it performed as expected. And I'll tell you what, guys, no bullshit. This feels identical to the way it was when it left here and it was sent down to him. Uh, the only thing I'm curious about now, and at the end of the video, I'll put the footage that I uh, kind of filmed before I sent it down to him because there was an issue uh, from the factory with how the screws that held the bearings in each side plate that kind of compressed the, compressed the waterproof seals. Uh, there was an issue with how tight they were, and they got kind of geary. And 
Oh, it got a little bit tighter and a little bit smoother. So that, that issue kind of does persist a little bit. And I got a little bit looser. See how it gets tight again? All right, so I'm chalking that up, and you'll see the video at the end, uh, to this being a pre-release model. It, it's something that I fought for about two hours before I packed it up and shipped it to him because I wanted to make sure that when he did get it, if it did fail, it didn't fail because this was a pre-spec pre-release model. Uh, the fact that it's in the condition it is now, uh, <laughs> I was kind of worried to be honest. But uh, I, 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 I would fish this all day, every day the way it is now. I would have no problems with it. Um, it's a little geary, but again, I think I missed. And I'll clip the mic on it so you can tell what I'm, what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling. That's almost Shimano smooth, a little heavy, just a little heavy since I gave it that knock inward. But if I go like this. I'm not sure if you can feel that gear mesh sensation. It's there. It's it's a little more than faint, I think, is the best way to describe it. Um, drag's not locked up at all. That functions as it should. He did have it set fairly loose. He didn't. He never doesn't doesn't feel like he uh, wrenched it up that or ratcheted up uh, the pretension all that much. Let's see if there's any salt on these threads. Any salt deposits there? Does not look like it. That's good. That means the seal back here held up. This was the seal that was probably going to see the most water, as well as the seal. Actually, we'll leave that off. Why not? as well as this seal here. And you can see the screws have tons of salt deposits all over them. Now normally when I do a tear down on a reel that's been used and abused, I'll take a, a bristle brush and uh, some warm soapy water and uh, kind of clean and scrub off the excess in the exterior because you don't want to ever allow crap from the outside to get inside the reel because sometimes you can't see it. If you can look on my bench here, see that schmoo? That's the stuff that was on the outside, just salt crystals, deposits, maybe some sand. And you don't want that to get inside a, a reel that you were working on. And you don't want it on your workspace because after you do clean the parts, you don't ever want to get it on your hands and that'll make it its way inside and who knows what's going to happen after that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. And the only thing I'm gonna do now is just give it a quick scrub down. Doesn't seem too bad. Oh, here we go. That's interesting. Usually you only see the, the paint wear here, here in the edges, depending on what kind of material the real seat's made out of, what is actually moving. Is it the, the lock nut on the bottom or is it on the top? It looks like it's probably on the bottom. And this here is interesting. So I guess salt got in there when it's standing up in the rod holder and just sat in there and over time maybe got through. It's not the end of the world. It's just paint. It's just aesthetics. It's nothing that's going to really pit or corrode unless you really, really don't take care of your gear. All right, so let me get back to what I was going to do and go ahead and scrub this down real quick. All right, now that bath time is over and she's squeaky clean, I want to bring up something real quick before we go ahead and crack her open, and that is what not to ever use on your Spin Fisher 6, especially those with a graphite rotor, and that is rubbing alcohol. If you take a look here, I always keep rubbing alcohol in a spray canister. It's something that doesn't give me headaches. It's a good, it's a good cleaner, and it helps accelerate drying. And I'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit. You can hear me spraying it on a paper towel, and I'm going to show you what happens if it gets in contact with the paint that's on the rotor. 
See how it's coming off? So just giving you guys a heads up, it's a very common household product. A lot of guys use it, me included. I use it to cut oil for bearings. I use it to purge bearings. And for whatever reason, the paint they chose to use on the rotor uh, it does not play nice with it. And it's very rare that it actually happens. I think one of the last times I found that rubbing alcohol gave me a problem was on a Shimano Metanium DC, which is a $500 reel now in the United States. And I used it on the, the DC brake and uh, it melted. <laughs> so it's very rare that something like that happens. And this caught me kind of by surprise enough so that I got it on my hands. So if you see that black shmoo on my hands, that's because the paint on the rotor came off. So after I'm done with this, I'm gonna remove the paint altogether. It looked pretty cool, but just throwing that out there. It didn't, however, do anything to the anodized or whatever kind of finish they applied to the metal. So with that being said, let's go ahead and crack her open. And that's, that, that does not reflect at all whatsoever on the performance of the reel, so I'm not saying that's the case, uh, but I just wanted to pass that information along to you guys because these are saltwater reels. You're going to have to clean them. They're going to need some TLC if you want them to last more than a season. And uh, if you're anything like me, uh, you like to do things as quickly as possible, and rubbing alcohol, especially the stuff I use, is that's uh, the 99% stuff. Um, you got to be careful where that stuff gets with this reel if you want it to look new. Now, the one thing I really like about these live liner reels from Penn, and this is coming from somebody who's been a Penn hater, you know, anti Penn, blah, blah, blah. I just like good stuff. The one thing I really like about this reel is how simple it is. Bait running reels from Shimano, all different brands, are generally speaking very complicated. This puppy comes apart easy, goes together easy, and has some internals that kind of separate it from the rest of the pack. All right, now you see here some salt deposits, some sand. You can see where I got the water up inside there. And I'm not generally a guy that washes my gear. And from what I understand, Elias is not either. And you want to make sure you don't make any contact with this inner portion here because it does have that hydrophobic coating uh, that does and can be removed quite easily by any type of friction. And uh, let's get this area cleaned up here. One thing I noticed with this reel, and part of what made getting these, or the, 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 the shimming right when I had that issue before I sent it out to him, was the axle of the main gear really does fit tight to the tolerance of the bearing. That's a good thing. That really is. You don't see that very often. And you can see through here that everything on the inside it even has some stiff peaks. I know we're not a baking channel, but you can see right around here, the grease didn't really seem to budge all that much. It doesn't look... He said he wasn't inside it. Meaning he never took it apart. Let's go ahead. See, this is going to be a little bit tricky to get out because it grabs that inner race of the bearing so tightly. Camera. Are you loosening it up? Yeah, there we go. I wish you could hear that crunching. That's the metal on metal trying to come out from that, that inner race. That's impressive. And here we have quite a bit of oxidized grease, which is why is it, it's that dark color. And <laughs> we, go, we gotta turn it against the paper towel and agree it to the, the spring uh, engagement and disengagement plate for the live liner or drag B mode. 
lever. I'm going to go ahead and scrub this main gear down so we can get a good view and see how it wore in. This is going to be interesting, guys. All right, uh, for you guys out there that really want to know, uh, truth be told, this was by far the most challenging main gear that I've ever tried to shoot up close like this. And you can kind of see, if you look at the, the surface of the gear tooth, which is that southern side, that's the wear area, it's mainly just polished, uh, which is what you want to see. And there doesn't seem to be any premature wear, uneven wear, or anything out of the normal. And it's just so shiny, it looks like it's liquid metal. <laughs> now, keep this in mind as well. The main gear and pinion in this reel is the same that's going to be in the standard uh, Spin Fisher 6. This is a live liner. You got some, it's got some extra gobbly gooks inside to you know, raise the price. But it's the same gear set you'll find in the lesser expensive reel. And that's pretty damn good. And that's coming from a guy that doesn't like spinning reels. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I, I got to tell you guys, the Spin Fisher 6 that I've been fishing, uh, man, um, I'm impressed. I, I really wasn't sure. After that first giant redfish that Elias put on this reel, and how soon he got on it after he had received the reel. I wasn't really sure how this reel was going to hold up. Uh, I'm actually kind of uh, impressed, if I'm being frank with you guys. Let me get a little bit more angle. I think it shows up a little bit more prominently there. But that's damn good. That's a beautiful main gear. It really is. Good stuff. No more cast zinc. Not in 2018, 2019. Daiwa BG, you uh, you got your work cut out for you. And keep in mind, I, I, I'm not all about material. You know, size of the main gear, the cut of the gear teeth, that's just as important. And on previous budget pen spin, uh, spinning reels, I, I didn't see this even of a wear pattern. So anything south of $200, it, 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 it didn't look like this after even less use. And again, they were cast zinc, but it, it, they were just cut differently. Cast differently. These are actually machined, so. All right, so uh, enough of the uppy closey uh, cure teeth stuff. What is going on, guys? I don't know why I'm talking like this, because this is going to the guys at Penn. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but I just want to report on, uh, I don't know if it's an issue in assembly or whatnot, but I was pulling my hair out trying to figure out why, after I spooled up 30-pound braid, uh, probably under two, three, four pounds of pressure, enough that after 300 yards, the shoulder's a little sore. And uh, it was strange that it developed a geariness that was perceptible 360 degrees all the way around. That usually tells me it's a shim, not some damage done to the gear's face, because you can literally feel it the same exact way all the way around. So I went in, and... You know, I have shims that fit this reel off of other pens and just shims lying around. I tried shimming it three different ways from Tuesday, and it was either too tight or it would be geary or be fine and then become geary. And how it would become geary would be as if I just gave it a little tug like that, and the geariness would come. And if I give it a little pop on the side, it would disappear. If I grabbed the rotor and just gave the handle a little turn, kind of like just putting a load on it, it would kind of back off a hair, but it was enough to make it cause that geary sound. So I, I, I went a little further and I was really trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And I found that this screw here and here and here, they were in tight. But when I say tight, I mean, they were really in there. And for, I just gave them a little turn. It was almost like they had to be cracked loose. I didn't, I didn't unscrew them all the way. They're, they've never been removed or they have never been past the set depth on the way out. And I was able to get it uh, tighter, and I definitely noticed more of the bearing being uh, pressed outward. So my assumption is the gear in the reel was too far out that way. It was shimmed. Uh, I guess the shimming wouldn't have made a difference because this bearing had some wiggle room to go in and out and too far in which would then make it shimmed incorrectly. And if you pull it out with the tolerances of the main gear, 
These are in here tight, guys. I mean, you, it's like, see how it is right now? I'm trying to get it in any further? Uh, it And when I'm trying to get it out, it's it's tight. It's a, it's a really tight tolerance, which is a good thing, but it could be a little bit deceptive, and it could pull on that inner race of the bearing, pulling it in and out when those screws weren't set properly. So we're going to go ahead and reassemble it. Hopefully we can get this where it needs to be. Make sure this seals all the way around well. All right, it's set. Put the horse collar back on. Nice reel, by the way. Hopefully you guys get to see the video where I uh, compare it to the, uh, the granddaddy of them all, the old Tunis. And this, whoever, whoever designed this, this is brilliant. I give this guy a raise, buy him a beer on me. You can see how it's a little bit tricky to get that axle through that bearing race. Hold on to your butts. We might have to remove a shim. That's the whole game we're playing. That feels great. I'm going to clip my mic to this so it picks up the vibrations. I'm also going to turn the gain on the mic up. Give me one second. Let's get the mic turned up. Now. No, I didn't fix it. We'll check these screws here as well. These shouldn't turn anymore. Um, oh, they do. And this ball bearing definitely got compressed even more. So it looks like to me there might be a problem at the factory from Penn. My microphone's all the way on this uh, table. Wow. Yeah, that ball bearing definitely got a lot flatter. And these screws haven't been touched. Now we can go back to the drawing board with the shims for a third time. All right, well, I had to cut that short so I could empty my memory card because I filmed for umpteen hours today. But you guys don't need to know that. That's weird. <laughs> we took out the shim, tightened it. Ugh, I don't understand. I don't understand. This is getting a little ridiculous now. Too far out. Gotta add another shim. 0.036.